Welcome to Norton Chemistry. Today we're going to be doing a qualitative analysis revision video. So this is how you test for ions present in samples so that we can identify the compounds present in samples. So we can test for anions and the order that we test for anions in is we first test carbonate ions, we then test sulfate ions and we then test halide ions or X minus. And we do it in a specific order for a reason which I'll explain later. To test for carbonate ions, we add a dilute strong acid such as nitric acid to a sample. Consider why we wouldn't add hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. In the presence of carbon ions, carbon dioxide gas bubbles will form, or, or this is also known as effervescence. And you can see in this equation how CO2 forms. So we add that acid and that provides the H plus ions. And they react with the carbonate ions to form CO2 and H2O. And then we can complete the test by bubbling the CO2 gas through lime water. And in the presence of CO2, the lime water turns cloudy because calcium carbonate precipitate forms. And then to test for sulfate ions, or SO42-, we need to add barium 2 plus ions, which we can gain from barium nitrate. Consider why we might not add barium chloride. So the ionic equation for this reaction is barium 2 plus plus SO42- minus forms barium sulfate which is a solid white precipitate and that is the positive test for sulfate ions and then to test for halide ions we need to add silver nitrate or AgNO3 and this provides silver ions Ag plus ions which react with the halide ions present in a sample and if there's chloride ions present a white precipitate forms if there's bromide ions present a cream precipitate forms and if there's iodide ions present, a yellow precipitate forms. And these precipitates colours can be quite difficult to differentiate. So to improve the test, we can differentiate by the solubility of the precipitates in ammonia. Silver chloride is the most soluble because it's soluble in dilute ammonia. Silver bromide is the second most soluble because it's soluble in concentrated ammonia, but it's insoluble in dilute ammonia. And then silver iodide is the most insoluble because it's insoluble even in concentrated ammonia and certainly in dilute ammonia. And then you have the ionic equation for this reaction. So Ag plus reacts with X minus, so a halide ion, to form AgX, which is a solid precipitate. So we have to do the test in this order so that we don't gain false positive tests. So for example, if you were to add barium nitrate to a compound containing carbonate, barium carbonate would form and that would form a white precipitate, which would lead to a false positive test for sulfate ions. We can't use HCl or H2SO4 or barium chloride because these would add chloride ions for HCl and barium chloride. And in the case of sulfuric acid, it would add sulfate ions. And this would lead to false positive tests as we'd be adding these ions into the samples that we're testing for. So we have to use barium nitrate and nitric acid rather than HCl. Testing for cations. Later in the specification, we talk about trans testing for transition metals. But for the moment, the only cation that we need to know about is ammonium ions. And these are NH4 plus ions. And we can test for these by adding aqueous sodium hydroxide and heating gently. And you can see this ionic equation. Hydroxide ions added to ammonium ions form ammonia gas and H2O liquid. So we can then test the gas formed using damp litmus paper so we can hold it over the end of the test tube as we heat it. And if a sample contains ammonium ions, NH4+, so NH3 gas is formed, the litmus paper will turn blue because ammonia is a base. So you've got an exam question. The first question is about electron configurations. So if you haven't seen my electron configurations video or you need any help with electron configurations, make sure to check out my video in the top right hand corner on that topic. So they're asking us for the electron configuration of a bromide ion. So that's important. If we're forming a bromide ion, that's Br minus. And that means that we've gained an extra electron. So if we have a look at the periodic table, we can see that bromine is in the P block. The bromine atom has five electrons in the P subshell. But since we're gaining an extra electron, we're going to have six electrons in the P subshell. So the electron configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, remembering that 4s fails before 3d, 3d10, and then bromine is in the fourth period, so it's going to have its outer electrons in the 4p subshell, so it's 4p6 because that's a full 4p subshell. A student adds a small volume of aqueous silver nitrate to an aqueous solution of bromide ions in a test tube. The student then adds a similar volume of dilute aqueous ammonia to the same test tube. Describe what the student would see in the test tube after the addition of aqueous ammonia. So when we add Ag plus ions in the form of silver nitrate to the bromide ions, it's going to form a cream precipitate and this cream precipitate is not going to be soluble in dilute ammonia. So we're going to be left with a cream precipitate. It's only soluble in concentrated ammonia. 
Write an ionic equation for any precipitation reaction which occurs in the student's test. Include state symbols. So that's the key bit, make sure you include state symbols. And we're adding aqueous silver ions to aqueous bromide ions to form solid silver bromide. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my video on Group 7 The Halogens in the bottom right hand corner now. You can also check out my website to purchase resources including my notes and flashcards. The link will be in the description below. Yeah.